Hey kid, you want to watch a movie where some people just kind of awkwardly walk around for three quarters of it? Sure, only if it includes a very well and cool design monster, and but then they underutilize it and the movie just turns out to be really boring. Sounds great, get in the van. You ready to talk some movies, Brennan? Yeah, okay. Well, let's go! Hi, welcome to the Corrupted Youth Podcast. My name is Dan. I'm Brennan. And we're a father and son duo that explores the latest blockbusters, classic genre films, and the schlockiest of Golden Age VHS rental store flicks in spoiler-heavy fashion. Boy, do we have a schlocky one today. Oh yeah. But we'll get to that in just a second, because normally we try not to do too much stuff to date our episodes all that much. Yeah. But we still come up with topical things. But we really just kind of wanted to say to all you dongles out there that things are getting a little crazy right now with this whole coronavirus thing. Just stay calm. It'll be okay. It's definitely creating a lot of challenges in everyone's life. Yeah. A lot of economic challenges for the country, too. Yeah. Even no matter what country you're in, because I know we got some uh, out-of-staters here. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's everywhere. This is a global thing, and... You know, don't don't go out and start panic buying. I, I legit had to buy toilet paper when that was happening, and it was not enjoyable. It was so weird. I felt so guilty for buying toilet paper. <laughs> but anytime I've been to the store lately, it's people constantly buying toilet paper. This is not that type of virus. So don't create a shortage of something if there's no need to create a shortage to begin with. You know, if there's like a shortage of like soap to wash your hands... I'd be like, okay, that's good. <laughs> People are out there washing their hands. Toilet paper. Like, yeah. I don't know, is it is it the food that they've stockpiled? They're like, oh no, I only bought ramen. Better go buy all this toilet paper. Oh no, I bought nothing but beans and sausages. Now I have to go poop. <laughs> so yeah, um, also, just kind of have fun with it. Don't Don't get all kooky and crazy locked up in your home. Yeah, if we find out things work out for us, we maybe we'll put out some more episodes over this. <laughs> yeah. I, I would like to do that, actually. Yeah. That's all we got to say about that. So what we're covering this time around is 1980s Scared to Death, Ooh. which honestly is not a very good title for this movie. I got shivers down my spine just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, it's Scared to Death, which sounds more like a slasher movie. Yeah. And in some ways it kind, kind of, of is, but ultimately it's a creature feature. It, it fails at both being a slasher and a creature feature, <laughs> so I don't really know what to call it at this point. It's a movie. It's, it's, yeah. Movie. Movie. Oh, we never talked about we that. We never did. We were going <laughs> to... Originally, we were going to rate movies on <laughs> by calling them a movie. Yeah. But it would be the tone that we used it with, because what really kicked it off was... uh. <laughs> when we watched a trailer for Garbage Pail Kids of the movie, and just the way the guys all chipper about it, and they just have a way of saying it, like, Garbage Pail Kids, the movie. Yeah. So <laughs> we should just... bring that back. You know what? Let's let we're gonna rate this movie by how we say movie. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna start right now. Yeah. We'll forget about that. We probably will. All right. <laughs> and I'll have to cut this part out. Yep. <laughs> So, yeah, we don't have a trailer for this one. I found a couple, but it's mostly screaming and (laughs) gunshots and screaming. No one cares. And there's one line of dialogue and then, I don't know, tagline and title. So it really wasn't that interesting. It's not going to be fun to listen to. But IMDb info, I'm not going to read their synopsis because they're more user summaries. Mm. Which would kind of defeat the purpose if we were just reading whatever somebody else wrote. Yeah. But anyways, Scared to Death was directed by William Malone, written by William Malone and Robert Short. And it stars John Stinson as Ted, Diana Davidson as Jennifer, David Moses as Detective Lou 
And he went by Jonathan David Moses for this one. Good move. (laughs) Uh, Tony Janata as Sherry. And that's pretty much your main characters right there. Yeah. Don't really need to get into that too much more. Interesting thing about this movie is that the director, William Malone, wanted to make a movie so he knew that you could get really good returns if you made a horror movie. And he also had worked in a Halloween mask shop. Hmm. So he built he built the creature for this movie himself. It took him three months. It paid off because, wow. Yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah. I got a lot to say. So I'll get into the rundown for this movie. I tried to keep it minimal. Brisk. <laughs> brisk. There's not really As much. brisk as possible. As brisk as they're walking in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, this is going to be a long <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, I love the prologue to this movie. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll try to. I'll try to have a cool voice while I read it. Actually, could you give me? Could you give me fifty year? Can you give me fifty year old man just trying just enough to not get fired from his job? What? <laughs> That's what I want you to impersonate when when reading this. Fifty year old man, right? Is that work? Just you want me to do this voice? No, no. That's like that's more. That's more like boomer okay just kind of like a grizzled like his his wife just nags at him when he's at home and he just hates his job (laughs) okay uh the events portrayed in this film although fictional are based on scientific fact if they have not already happened they soon could genetic engineering is real and soon we may all have to deal with new values and definitions for life and death perfect that was perfect (laughs) thanks which, that's a crazy prologue. Yes. If it hasn't already happened. Like, ooh, somewhere out there. Look out, kids. <laughs> I like that it's based on scientific fact. Yeah. There's nothing f- scientifically factual about this movie, I don't no. think. Other than that, genetic engineering exists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a movie about, like, you know, there's a violent killer on the loose. Ooh. And he's stalking co-eds, which actually that just kind of changes because it's also wh- whoever because this movie is like that. <laughs> and um, But, you know, it's not like an ordinary psycho, even though the police and everybody thinks that there's a psychopath on the loose, a serial killer, you know, killing these people. It's actually a creature who we later find out is a creature known as a Sinjinor. It's a cool name. It is a cool name because it stands for synthesized. I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> synthesized genetic organism. What's what's let's discuss Sinjinor here because okay, yeah. <laughs> so it's syn- synthesized, right? Uh huh. So it's synthetic, right? Yeah. Synthesized genetic organism. It's a kind of redundant. Like a genetic organism. That's just any organism. They're all genetic. Yeah. I, it sounds cool. It it does sound cool. I mean, we can't expect much out of this movie. You watched it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I think it's a really cool design. Uh he was definitely influenced by H.R. Giger. Mm-hmm. And is it Geiger or Giger? Send us an email. Hey Ryan, do you still listen? <laughs> you want to correct <laughs> Brennan again? <laughs> but yeah, uh it's a it's a really cool design. And actually it looks strangely enough, it looks a lot like the creature from Species, which was designed by H.R. Giger. And so that's kind of funny. Yeah. Because it has silver eyes. Uh huh. And it has that same aesthetic. Yeah. And I mean, I think he nailed what he was going for with this. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a pretty cool full bodied suit. I don't know why it's not in the movie more. I really don't either. I'm glad they didn't go with like classic like hr giger like concept artwork and stuff because it would have had a giant wiener (laughs) it would have (laughs) but yeah they they looked so cool and they they did some interesting cinematography at the end of the movie when they were like actually like you know showing it (laughs) doing stuff like doing stuff yeah like cool reveals and stuff like that and like it made like weird noises yeah it made like a whistling noise but it doesn't do it throughout the whole movie but i thought that was pretty effective actually yeah because then you hear it you know it's there and it gets you on edge mm-hmm. where is sinjinor yeah and it's supposed to be because the sinjinor draws in the heat to kind of like fuel itself basically yeah it converts then, the heat and expels cold air yeah which happens in the very first case in this movie because there's a lady and you get your gratuitous boobs in it 
but I like how she's on the phone with somebody and mm-hmm. rejecting this dude, yeah. making excuses not to go on a date with them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then uh, Sinjinor actually cuts the power to her house, too. Kind of pretty smart. That's very smart. Yeah, Sinjinor is actually not dumb, but also very dumb. But I wonder, I wonder if that was just a byproduct of its like biology, where it like draws energy because there's all all the other places like cars don't work, lights don't turn on. So I wonder if that is something that it does on purpose. Oh, that's possible. Or if it's just natural. All right, hang on, dongles. We're gonna watch the movie again. And yes. We're come back. Oh yes. Yay! <laughs> Round two. We can fast forward through all the walking. But yeah, uh, so the cops show up, and all they can find is like goo, mm-hmm. and the the fact that her place was cold, even though it was hot outside. So there you have it. So we've got Detective Lou, who's on the case. They're pretty baffled by this because apparently, uh, what did they say? Eleven people so far. Yeah, they found dead, and there's so there's not really enough consistency with Sinjinor and the killing. Sometimes it just kills people. And then other times it takes them away. Don't don't think about it too much. You might hurt yourself. Yeah, because I think they just kind of made stuff up as they were going yeah. along. Yeah. I think it was very rushed. <laughs> so Detective Lou decides he's going to get the help from his ex-partner, Ted, who, I mean, we should really talk about Ted because mm-hmm. this guy. Dude. Because So we thought initially that... It was very possible that the guy who plays Ted is actually the writer and director. Yeah, or or one of them at least. Yeah, because man, is he written to just be the best? What's the what's the male equivalent of a Mary Sue? Uh, a Gary Sue? A Gary Stew? Gary Stew? He's a Gary Stew. He kind of is. Like he's just like we're introduced to him and he's like arguing with his guys, like oh, I'm trying to get my book published, and he's yeah, he's an ex. He's an ex-detective turned author, successful author. But he's also a private investigator. But he's also a private investigator. And this guy is so hammy in this role. Yeah. I had to look him up. He doesn't have a picture on IMDb. And I was like, has this guy ever been in anything else? Because he was he was hired the night before this movie started because, <sighs> get this, Actor singer Rick Springfield <laughs> was supposed to star in this oh movie. My God! And the night before, he dipped out because his his excuse was, "I'm going to miss too many acting classes." So the director <laughs> scrambled and managed. He's like, "Oh yeah, I remember this guy from improv class. Let me see if he'll do it." Improv that makes sense too. Yeah, and. When I actually looked him up and I found a picture of him, it turns out he used to be on a TV show, a TV show that was called Square One. It was a math educational show on PBS (laughs) and he was on MathNet and I used to watch that all the time. And I remember liking that guy and I, my brain can't wrap around the fact that it's the same dude in this movie. Huh. That's crazy. This movie would be so different. This movie would be... Could you imagine if it had Rick Springfield in it? Dude. Oh my god. Yeah, so that's pretty crazy that they had somebody who actually... I I don't wouldn't consider Rick Springfield a great actor, but at least he's a recognizable name. I don't think he was really famous at the time, but still. Yeah, it would have been weird. Yeah, and yeah, this guy does... He plays this role as Ted far too comedic yeah he's like always eating pop rocks or something wacky yeah something wacky like the end of the movie he's like planning out a map to go kill the monster or where whatever he's just shaving his neck hair the same time because that's so (laughs) that's acting he's like guys i think ted in this situation (laughs) be shaving his neck hair and i think that would be funny and the director's like Sure. You know what would be really funny? If he just had a sneaker nailed to the wall. Uh, why would he have a sneaker nailed to the wall? Yeah, Because he's Ted. Because he's Ted. Yeah. So how Gen- Jennifer, his love interest, comes into this movie, he totally just backs into her like classic car. She's like, this car has been in my family for a very long time, and it's never been in an accident. 
which is funny because later on in the movie, <laughs> yeah. Ted reveals like through his detective work that talking to her about herself and he he knew that her parents died in a car accident in 1975. Oh, oh my God. So it wasn't in that car. Bucky killed her parents. <gasps> We're on to something. Scared to death Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, yes. folks. Sinjinor on the loose. He's going to fight Captain America. But the other weird thing about this, too, is because he acts like he does not care about this whatsoever. He's like, oh, yeah, that's going to be really expensive. So he's like, oh, come, come to my place or whatever, and I'll give you a check. Check with your insurance. And it's like supposed to be 1200 bucks. So not only does he just give her cash, he gives her $2,000, right? Mm -hmm. And then also later on in the movie, he bought the quarter panel for this car, which wouldn't the mechanic or body shop take care of that? Because he's he's perfect. Because he's perfect and he's an author and he's a private detective who is an ex-detective and he's so cool and his eyes need to be farther apart. (laughs) <laughs> he does this pretty close set eyes <laughs> and I guess the reason why he eats the Pop Rocks too is because they never flat out say he was an alcoholic but it's just kind of alluded to so I just kind of pe- you gotta piece a lot together in this movie and this movie is very tell not show yeah <laughs> which that comes up later and um there's this scene where there's just this random lady who seems nervous uh-huh. who makes a phone call and when somebody picks up on the other end she just hangs up and you just go, who is this person? And then nothing. What's you never happening? see her again for another, like, hour. <laughs> because, like, it opens with her and she's, like, watching the news. She's like, oh, like, thinking, like, oh, it's so terrible. The murders aren't anything. Oh, Sinjinor is going to murder her. Set up another murder. Something. You know, just a phone. It's, just, it's, like, three minutes of her walking to the phone. She sees that the doors open. Calls someone. Nothing. Hangs up. Then the movie just continues. That's the it's thing. The strangest thing. That's the thing with this movie too. If it's even somewhat dark and somebody has to walk, they walk as slow as possible and act really nervous. And they're terrified. Jennifer's like walking over to Ted's house and she has to go underneath like this bridge. And it's like spooky lit, you know. And it's like nightish time. Yeah, it's a tunnel. It's a yeah. walking path. She's like walking on normally. Tunnel. She's like terrified. She's looking behind her. She's scared. She's Walking, like, like all nervously. She's looking around. She leaves the tunnel, back to normal. Fair enough. I mean, there is a serial killer on the loose, supposedly. Yeah, but it's, and just, it's... so, like, dark area, boom, nervous. <laughs> and this was also filmed in the late 70s, which... Yeah, I guess it was Not to say that there's not any more assaults now, but it just felt grimier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you're rollerblading in this parking lot? Terrified. You are they very scared. They're rollerblading. They're roller skating. skating. Oh yeah. Yet again, hang on. <laughs> We're getting to it. <laughs> and then uh, I think what happens next is the car attack, where it it's cut so weird, where this car is like <laughs> yeah. driving, and you just hear somebody say something about car. It's like car, and it's like whoa. And then this this girl gets out. And then walks the opposite direction of where that car was driving. And you're like, wait, what? Because she gets out and she's like, wasted. But she's, she's like, like, oh, I can Don't walk. Worry, I can walk the rest of the way. And you're like, oh, so she's going to like, you know, walk through the woods. Or like, yeah, walk yeah. somewhere. No, it's back to her car. 20 the, feet away. 20 feet away. The other direction <laughs> that the car is going. Like, <laughs> it's so weird. So odd. But then her car doesn't start to your point of, you know, maybe Sinjinor affects electrical systems yeah right but she gets it to start and man she's hammering on that cast though uh-huh. I'm like you're just gonna flood it yeah don't do that that's a terrible idea but she gets it started and the wheels are turning but she's not going anywhere because Sinjinor is actually lifting up the back of the car yeah uh-huh. so she can't drive because it's you know the 70s and mm. rear wheel drive <laughs> cars were you know it was... you want to slip everywhere real wheel drive Real, real, wheel, <laughs> rear. I think my brain just shut down. Rear wheel drive. Yes. That movie has this effect on people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Sinjinor, she doesn't realize that there's just a giant monster 
seven foot monster standing behind her car at any point. Mm-hmm. So she gets out and is immediately attacked by Sinjinor. Screaming, ah, blood on windshield. And then, yeah. ooh, the uh, window fogs over because it's so cold. That was actually kind was, of an interesting... It was a nice detail. Yeah. For once, they actually paid attention to the small details in the movie. <laughs> Later on, there's a sewer attack, like some sewer workers going down in the sewer, and uh, the one bearded guy. The, these characters were fun, by the way. Yeah, they had fun banter and yeah. stuff. And they they, they just... felt like real people, and you actually cared for them. Yeah, and was... you know them for like a minute. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want like these people to die. These blue collar like workers—they're just—they're ha- making the best out of their bad job. Yeah, they're working like third shift or whatever. And yeah, it seems terrible. But yeah, so the one guy goes down in the sewer, walks super slow, mm-hmm. scared, very scared. Uh huh. Even though he's just there to do his job, it's done it a million times. Yeah, but he runs in the Sinjinor, which then he's attacked by Sinjinor, and his his. Buddy, who's wearing, he's got Skylab written on his helmet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was so obviously funny. just written on. But no, I thought that was funny. Yeah. And uh, he goes down in the sewer, but then he must see something, either Sinjinor attacking his friend or whatever, and he gets scared and he, he climbs out and does like this crazy back roll. <laughs> yeah. And so I've got a question okay. because I don't quite remember. When we watched that movie, did the, did the, the second guy die? No. He puts the manhole cover back on the, the manhole, and then he goes, ooh, like he's like all scared. And then you think, you know, the manhole's going to open or anything. It just cuts away. Yeah, because in the trailer, the manhole opens and Sinjinor grabs him and pulls him down under into the sewer. That was not in the final cut. That's what I thought when I was looking at the trailers, because I thought, wait a second. I did, don't, I've seen this movie twice, yeah. and... I don't remember that happening. And you never see his body later either. No. So that's weird. I don't know. Why not just show it? It would explain why... What's canon? <laughs> what is Sinjinor canon? Is, is he dead or alive? It would definitely... Because the whole time I kept saying, why doesn't that guy just call the police in this... You know, there's a monster in the sewer. Mm-hmm. They would at least have to check it out. Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah, there's also uh, the awkward date scene where it's funny, too, because they're leaving notes for each other on each other's doors. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, late 70s texting. Yeah. But like, so like she goes over to Ted's and she's like, oh, where do you want to eat? And he's like, oh, I have this perfect spot picked out. And, you know, because he's perfect. And she's like, oh, why don't we just eat at my house? I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. First off, like, I thought oh, that like, happened because he was way underdressed because he's just kind of a schlub. He was kind of a schlub. Yeah. Which is kind of weird. He's so rich. You think that he'd be dapper? Oh yeah, because he wrote five books. He wrote five books, right? He wrote and... five books, and he was just tired of writing books that sell. <laughs> so they go to, they go to her house, and it is incredibly awkward. They're like sitting there, and he's like, "Nice steak," and she's like, "Thanks." He's not even really like looking at her or anything. Yeah, and then like she's trying to get him drunk by giving him more wine. She just fills his big old glass full. Well, no, of wine. she asks, and he wants more, because it's the most like stunted, like broken dialogue. <laughs> it's so awkward. It's so awkward. And then she's like, "Should I put on music?" And he's like, "That would be great, or whatever." She puts on music, and it's just like weird. You have to watch a lot of things happen in this movie in real time. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't actually have to watch the entire date. <laughs> it was so awkward, and like the fact that he was like. Oh, I'm a private guest investigator. Here's all the things I learned about you. Let's not like much for personal information. Your parents dying? I'm sorry, but if you're out on the first date, don't bring up her dead parents. Right. Like, and it's just really creepy. It's very creepy. Yeah. And but she just says, like, hee hee, oh. you're so charming, Ted. Oh, learn so much. you're such a you're such a cool guy, Ted. Ted, you're so cool. I think that's what he was trying to do was just come off as cool. And it just, he came off as kind of a jerk who doesn't care. Yeah, definitely. He definitely just felt like he didn't care the entire time. Yeah, but I do love that scene, though. It is so, <laughs> so great. Awkward. Oh, it is so good. Yeah. But yeah, so they end up just like being a couple and she becomes his assistant. Yeah. And I like later when uh, Detective Lou comes over and they're talking and she just comes out with like an empty folder. Yeah. And she's like, oh, hi, Ted. Where would you like me to file these? And she's right next to the filing cabinet. And he just rambles off about 
like the names on there yeah like normal filing procedures yeah. which is just ridiculous uh-huh but then she just walks away because like it's just in like I, this room is bigger than what they show of ted's apartment slash it's very office. small for people that aren't in the room right now it is very small it's, the apartment's very tiny yeah i'd i'd say that room's maybe maybe eight feet by eight feet i just imagine like they're making the movie and they're like we have nine feet of drywall in this door that has a really high doorknob. What are we going to do? Oh, that was... That was filmed in an actual location, I bet, though. Mm. Well, it wasn't the director's house because he had to put his house on a second mortgage to finance this movie. What? And he sold his car, too. Oh, my so God. Maybe that's why Ted's cool yellow car doesn't get seen very much <laughs> because that was probably the director's car. Yeah, and then there's a, there's the scene that... Next attack we get is the roller skating people in the parking ramp. Uh, yeah. Where they just want to roller skate down this parking ramp, which seems pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it actually looked like a lot of fun. It did. But, man, their outfits are the most late 70s oh. I think you can possibly get. Yeah. It was awesome. But one girl just skates down to the bottom. And, of course, who happens to be there? Sinjinor. Oh. Because Sinjinor... Sinjinor has the best luck yeah. for finding people alone in dark places. That are very scared already. Yeah. So then we have to basically watch this lady take her skates off in real time. Yeah. Put her shoes on. Run around. Yeah. Only to be caught by Sinjinor. And this is where Sinjinor actually starts whistling. Mm-hmm. Which was pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. And then he, like, sticks his weird little, like, Oh, yeah, fish tongue right. thingy. It, it looks mouth. like a gummy fish that yeah. comes out of his mouth. Yeah, and like sticks into her mouth and she's like bleeding or whatever. And yeah. So this is a change in tactic for Sinjinor. But. Well, not a change in tactic. It's just we see what he's doing. Uh, yeah, okay, fair enough. But then he just hangs her up in a utility closet yeah. or something it's, or maintenance closet. So that way somebody can open the door and she can flop down like in a slasher movie. Which is kind of weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. But while the police are checking it out, and Detective Lou's there, and Ted's there, Jennifer's there. Jennifer, for, for whatever reason, is... A- an active her- crime scene. An active crime scene. Murder crime scene. And Jennifer's talking to people, yeah. like witnesses. Yeah. And taking notes, and I'm like, what? Yeah. You know, sure, maybe Ted, I guess. I mean, I get it. She's she his assistant. I but... just feel like she wouldn't want to be there. She doesn't want to be in near dead bodies. and Yeah. So, like, when, who is it? The chief or the commissioner shows up and he's all mad? I thought it was very... I thought it made a lot of sense. Yeah. You wouldn't just want these random... And then, of course, there's Ted and he hates Ted. And he really wants to figure out this murder case because the entire town is worried. <laughs> so, yeah. It made sense. I don't blame him. And then they get the, the chief and Ted get into an argument, and Ted actually like kind of roasts him. It was pretty cool. And Ted's just like, God, I just I just hate that guy, and that's why I'll never work. It's like this one guy stopping you from catching a serial killer. Really <laughs> put the needs of the people above your petty little argument. <laughs> yeah, but the, the mysterious phone call lady's there yeah. in the background. In the background. And Jennifer's like, hey, this lady says she's got some information. I'm going to talk to her, but then it just cuts to Jennifer driving somewhere at night by herself, uh-huh. and she goes to this laboratory. You see her parked which, her car. Which is definitely not a machine shop. Well, we see her park her car, and we see her get out, see her walk for like 30 feet, walk up to the door, open the door, walk in, in like five different cuts, of course, and she's in a machine shop. <laughs> Which is a lab. Which is a lab. <laughs> it's a lab. It's definitely not a machine shop. She's looking around. Scared. Yeah, for Sherry. She's scared, and it's dark. How she just is able to get into this place? Hey, whatever. It's maybe. a seven, late 70s. Just walk in. <laughs> nobody, nobody locked any doors anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> There's definitely no security. Yeah. <laughs> of course, Sinjinor's there. Yep. She gets caught. Gets the weird mouth, whatever. And then someone finds her because she ends up in a coma. Yeah, I think Sherry must have I think must have Sherry been. must have, yeah. Actually, finally showed up. Yeah. Which, why didn't they just talk there? Because 
Exactly. Like, she shows up. She's there in person. <laughs> Why not just go, like... Why did they take separate cars? <laughs> in the middle of the night. <laughs> when there's a what she knows to be a monster, a killer monster on the loose. And she decides, we'll do this later at a more dangerous location. Oh, I just love this movie, though. It's like, it's like <laughs> I don't know, meet at a cafe. Go down to a cafe and just have, have a wee little chat. It, yeah, so... Jennifer is conveniently written out of this movie because you can't possibly have two women around because Sherry just fills the role of woman yeah. and granted she has information for them. Sure. And when she's talking to uh, Detective Lou and Ted in Ted's tiny office, it is it's horrible. so great. Horrible acting. If you love bad acting. Oh, so bad. Here's the thing with this. They obviously hired her because she's attractive, but then they also realized that she had to also be smart. Mm -hmm. So they bought the biggest glasses they could find and put them on her. It's just like um, <laughs> Diana and uh, Wonder Woman. <laughs> glasses! Now she's smart. Granted, those big glasses were popular back then because the, the thought was, if you have bigger glasses, it'll make your nose look smaller, which I don't know if that works or not. It just seems like... Hey, I'm she gonna, makes some work. I want to cover up half my head with glasses. Yeah. And, oh, her. But anyway, but her acting is so bad. She's like whining. She's like really whiny. And she's like, oh, come on. Just listen to my story. It's like. Yeah. She explains how she worked at the lab where Sinjinor was made, but she didn't actually see Sinjinor except in the embryonic stage. Mm -hmm. But she just knows this is the Sinjinor. And the doctor who is working in this lab, he died. Probably killed by Sinjinor. Probably killed by Sinjinor mm -hmm. during Sinjinor's escape from the lab. And, man, it's it's so weird. Like, I'm scratching my head right now, just thinking about trying to wrap my brain around this. And then they just believe her, too. Oh, yeah, they totally just believe her. And she's like, hey, guys, I'll tell you what, I hid some notes about all this. I hid all the notes, which, turns out, are at the lab still. Yeah. Totally not at the at a machine shop. And they're like, yeah, why don't you go, go get those notes? So, so she goes to get the notes, but she's walking around there with just a flashlight. Uh, slowly, of course, because yeah. it's dark. And she's scared. She finds the notes and just starts reading them. <laughs> For like two minutes. It's just her. Reading. Reading. Because this movie is tell, not show. I would have loved to see a flashback. Little baby Sinjinor. Eating a rat or something crazy, you know? Having me a little puppet, a little slimy puppet. They show, like, weird pods in Sinjinor's hangout in the sewer. Yeah. Why not just make it a pod? Literally don't care. Just show me show me the doctor with this big bushy mustache. Go, oh, writing down some notes. And then he gets killed by some, you know, instead of just this, the worst actor in the entire movie having to read a bunch of notes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just reading the script it's so wonderfully bad it's so bad <laughs> but then like Sinjinor comes home back to the lab because why not just just so he could be there maybe he maybe Sinjinor realized that somebody was on the case and he was gonna get busted so he's like oh i i can't have any of this i better go to the lab and prevent sherry from revealing too much to the detective so i can continue my murderous spree but then Ted shows up anyway. Because? Because he's Ted, and he has to be there. We heard about the scene where he's, he goes to, like, he's like, I need a weapon. And he yeah, just pulls out the, the the drawer on the desk, and it's just like three handguns and just rolling ammo. Just just ammo just rolling around as he pulls the drawer out. It's he shocking at how many handguns are in there. Just, there's more than three. It's like five. And then he just looks at one, just picks it up, checks the mag, loads it, and leaves. It's like, oh my god, that's so unsafe. He said loaded handguns. And like, the bolts, are, the bolts just rolling in the drawer, too. It's the 70s. And it's the 70s. He's a, he's a schlubby detective. A private dick. Oh, now you don't want to be in on that joke? <laughs> well, there's no Richard in his name, so it kind of... They would call him Private Dix. You never heard that term? No. For a private detective? No. The more you know. The time is now, old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you got me. Now I'm old. Yeah, so they're mucking about in the lab, right? And they're going to go out this door, but all of a sudden, who should be on the other side? But it's the bearded sewer worker, 
And he's got like cobwebs he on him. He looks like a zombie. Something. Yeah, he just has like zombie face paint on. And he falls down and he's like, says something about like giving an Oscar worthy performance. It's in the sewer. And then he just spits up like a bunch of green foam. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he dies. It is great. It's awesome. <laughs> so they're like, oh, the sewer. And they look and right outside the door. There's just a manhole. Yeah. So that guy put the cover back on, too. Keep that in mind, because it's not, like, open or anything. Mm-hmm. But it it looks like the pavement's wet, and there's, like, a trail leading from it up to the door. So they're like, ah. Uh, the sewer. The sewer. Oh, this is where Ted's like, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to get that, Sinjinor. And <laughs> so they go down in the sewer, like I mentioned. There's, like, pods. Mm-hmm. This there's, part was actually pretty cool. It was kind of cool, yeah. So there's, like, pods. Very aliens-like scenario here of people, like, kind of, like, the biomechanical stuff of the pods and the people. You can presume that they're impregnated or something. Who knows? Or maybe just feeding the pods. I don't know. Whatever. But there's so much great sound effects in here of, like, people, like, Yeah. (laughs) And there's farty noises. That's pretty cool because he just starts shooting the pods and the pods are like screeching. Yeah. Yeah. That was neat. Yeah, at least he was like very proactive about it. <laughs> like, nope. Can't let this happen. Can't have any of this. <laughs> this whatever this is, no. They're probably not good. And then Sinjinor shows back up because, you know, pod's going to show up. Probably didn't like that. And then Sewer Chase. The longest, longest, sewer most chase. boring. At first, it was kind of cool because it's just like the outline of Sinjinor. It's kind of like walking down these tight corridors. He's whistling again. Yeah. They're trying to get manual covers open. It was, it did have like a slight bit of tension, which is good for this movie. It's improvements. Yeah. And they really utilize like like the 40 feet of sewer that they built yes. for this. And then they want, find... How many angles you want to see this from? Yeah. We got it. And then it's like, oh, we got it. We can escape through here, but it's not tall enough. And then Sinjinor, you don't see Sinjinor for the last like five minutes of the chase. It's just them like <laughs> grabbing a ladder, just getting a ladder. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because there was just a random ladder. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, goes back and gets it. And then because he magically finds some place where he has to remove all these boards. And I'm like, Sinjinor totally would have caught them by now. Mm-hmm. And so just not even, it's not paced right. And they manage to get up and out of there, which just leads them to a machine shop, which is definitely not a lab. That is definitely not a machine shop. Yeah. Making it a machine shop. <laughs> With a bunch of boxes. They put... Oh, they Stacked put a lot boxes. Of, but just stacked boxes. A wall of boxes just to not have an open space. Mm-hmm. And I like how Ted mentions, like, oh, this is such and such machine shop because I know this because I'm Ted. Yeah, because I'm Ted and I know everything. Do you need someone that can get replacements for European, old European cars? I got the guy for you. (laughs) Oh, Ted. He probably hammered that steel himself. Yeah, probably. He's got the money. I'm so bored with making money and writing all these good selling books. (laughs) But yeah, there's a cool, it's, it's an okay chase. And then they find, like, this cool, like, press, this big hydraulic press. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, we're going to kill with this. She's like, he's like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna lure it here. You need to operate this machine. And she's like, I can't do it because I'm useless. I can't operate this machine. He's like, you stand on these two things. You press these buttons. It's <laughs> not that hard. Yeah. He's like, we just, great plan, actually. Yeah. I wonder if James Cameron watched this. Oh. I'll crush it with the press. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's done way better in Terminator. I mean, it's done in the original The Fly. Oh, yeah, but... That was also, like, a suicide. Yeah. <laughs> like, you need to kill me. <laughs> I have a fly head and a fly hand. There's an alright chase through the um through the machine shop. I think this this is where they show off the monster the best. Yes. Um. There's some, like, there's some really cool shots. There's, like, one through, like, this steel wheel, and you see, like, all the um, spokes of the, the wheel and everything, and you just see the outline of... Sinjinor like standing up stuff like that where they utilize his shape and like the whistling it's mm-hmm. very well like it's done very well and I I like that and then he's right next to the press and then he gets Ted gets caught by Sinjinor 
and he's like sticking the little thing. Oh, I forgot to mention the little thing that comes out of his mouth, it, like goes into their throat and then sucks out their spinal fluid. Oh yeah, that's right. They did be, be, somehow that came up because yeah, it doesn't matter. But anyway, yeah, but that's what I mean because Detective Lou mentions how the lady who was attacked in the car got her leg ripped off. Yeah. And so he's just, I don't know, maybe he needs to eat or something. But I mean, if he's taking people down to the sewer to grow these pods. You're thinking about it too much. Why is he then only sucking fluid out of people? And he also gets energy from the warmth of the air. Yeah, I don't know. I've thought about this way more than the writer director. <laughs> but then who says, uh, shows up to save Ted but not the female character standing right there and can totally just help him. But Detective Lou. Yeah, because they somehow ended up at the lab. Yeah. And Detective Lou just immediately goes, the sewer. Yeah. <laughs> he, he figured he, that out right away. Didn't even need a weird dead guy to tell him. And apparently the sewer has a direct line to the machine shop, the lab, anywhere somebody needs to be. That's where the sewer leads to. Yep. So he shows up and they blast Sinjinor with a shotgun onto the hydraulic press and then an annoyingly long time later what's her name decides sherry. to sherry decides to close the press it was so long since so you just laying there and i'm just like close it press the buttons and ted has to be like now is the time <laughs> close it yeah because he shot sinjinor earlier and it didn't even phase him yeah he's just laying there yeah and he gets crushed you don't see i would have liked to see it in a flattened sinjinor <laughs> That would have been cool. That would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> or some something squish out. Yeah. It's a good, it's a pretty good cut for that, though. Where yeah. there's like a dude it's in there. Very, is very clean. Yeah. Surprisingly, edited well on uh-huh. that aspect, anyway. Unlike a lot of the audio in this movie, <laughs> where sometimes you can't even hear people talking. Yeah. I mean, everybody was just up here watching TV in the other room, and we could barely hear people on our movie sometimes. But we couldn't turn it up too loud, otherwise it would just be extra loud, and then they would have just turned the TV up more up here. Oh, anyway. And then it's like cuts like Jennifer in like the ho- in the hospital room. Yeah, because oh, don't forget Jennifer's in this movie. Yeah, and then like Sinjinor is there, and then she's like, oh, Sinjinor and Sinjinor, and then it's like, oh, it's a nightmare, and that was stupid. It's, it's a like a f- weird fake out nightmare, fake scene. out nightmare, and then it like. You zooms into a sewer ray because I needed like like fifty more seconds of footage. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like slow motion going down that tunnel in the sewer, and then it just abruptly goes to credits. It kind of reminds me of the end of um Phantasm, you know, the end of Phantasm because he's like in the house and then all of a sudden, oh yeah, the tall man comes yeah. out. Yeah, he's like, Boy. yeah, he's like, ah, it's kind of like that, but that had a better. Fake, or it's name. never over. Yeah. Whatever he says. Yeah. But this one is Please don't dumb. write into the podcast and tell me <laughs> what the tall man says at the end of Phantasm. But instead, listen to our episode on Phantasm. Yeah, there you go. There uh, you go. Ah, uh-huh, we've done it. Is there a sequel? To this movie? Yeah. Yes, there is. A sequel came out uh, 10 years later. 10 years? Yes. Um... Hang on, just give me one second here. It goes by the title of Sinjinor. It's two minutes longer than this one. Ooh, so probably a lot more walking. Yeah. <laughs> um, not written or directed by any of the same people. That's never a good sign. And apparently they are genetically engineered creatures for use as super soldiers to fight U.S. wars in the Middle East. But of course, they're going to run amok. Yeah. It might be worth checking out just to see more Sinjinor. If the design is the same, or... I believe so. Then it, then it could be pretty interesting. Yeah, I never heard about it until I had seen this movie. Yep, he's right on the cover. Huh. That's pretty cool. It looks like he, they upgraded it a little too. So if anything, he looks a little better. Good job, Sinjinor. What a, what a fella. Sinjinor's cool, he's underutilized. That That's like the biggest flaw i'd say yeah i agree you can have a stinky movie but if you have a cool monster throughout that stinky movie doing cool things i'm way more interested yeah a lot of movies sometimes don't show the monster because usually the monster is not very good yeah sinjinor is good yeah have them 
go into another house, kill an old lady. Literally just have this movie be an excuse to show your cool suit that you made doing terrible things to people. Yeah, that would have been fantastic. Mm -hmm. But instead, they tried too hard and failed miserably. Yes. I know that um, the budget for this was only like $74,000, and they instantly, like, sold it to Malaysia for 90 so they already they made money like instantly that's cool good for them yeah i i don't i couldn't find anything about like how much was actually made altogether but i mean it was profitable i guess uh do you have a favorite scene um i think probably just that that last battle just cuz you get to see senjinor the most otherwise it would probably be like one of his killings just cuz you know that's the interesting part of the movie <laughs> or it could just be that that date scene because it's so incredibly awkward oh it is fantastically awkward i think my favorite scene is when the sewer worker just shows up (laughs) that guy mm, it's so good so good yeah do you recommend scared to death no 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 i don't because it's just too boring for what it's worth honestly there's too much walking too much scared walking not enough sinjinor i agree with you in that that there's Far too much walking. It is pretty boring. I had a rip-roaring good time watching this by myself for the first time, but to watch it again, oh, I didn't realize this movie was so slow. But I also remembered that I was doing stuff while watching it the last time. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think I, I I do recommend this if you want to check it out. If you just want to laugh at the bad acting and stuff, it's so good. And you get and you get a cool monster as a bonus. So that's my recommendation. Are we going to write this movie by how we say the word movie? Ooh, okay. You go. You can go first. Give it a movie. <laughs> <laughs> movie. I'd say Scared to Death is definitely a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen worse. <laughs> we'll say that. I have seen far worse than this. And this... Well, I don't know. It kept my attention, at least with the bad acting in it. Yeah. All right. Hey, maybe maybe you out there in listener land, you dongles. Listener land? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I like that, though. Maybe you have some opinions on Scared to Death. Maybe we do want to hear them. Maybe. maybe we do care. Yeah. Chances are, we do. Please send in. Hey, let us know how the apocalypse is going for you. Yeah. <laughs> What are you doing to keep saying? Any movie recommendations for the apocalypse? Oh, there you go. Want us to cover something? Because we'll have time. Yeah. And you can reach us if you email us at corruptedyouthpod at gmail.com. How do do I computer? Oh, do I go to Yahoo? Do I go to Yahoo? Brennan, where's my Ask Jeeves? I need to... I need to find something, or do I just gotta use the goggle? Oh, I'll use Bing. Oh, Bing's good. Bing's good. Bing's good. <laughs> um, now probably isn't the time to recommend supporting the show, because we understand that everybody's probably hitting some hard times, but you know what? If you feel like it, we've got some t-shirts available at Tee Public. There will be a link in the notes. Also, there's gonna be a link, because... With the new theme and everything, I made a music video. Check it out. It's super cool. Yeah, it's pretty fun. It was hastily thrown together, but it works. It's fun. Yeah. And it's short, too. So there you go. 46 seconds. You have nothing but time. You can get that for free. But yes, thanks to all our listeners, the dongles out there. Thank you for listening. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Yep. Please rate and review wherever you listen, whether it's on the Spotify. Podbean. Pod being our home, our home, our warm home. Mm-hmm. We're all we're all, we're cooped up currently at Podbean. At Podbean, yeah. <laughs> Podbean HQ, send more trail mix. <laughs> That's all we need. Yep. Apple Podcasts, yeah, and also a huge thanks to our fellow podcasters. We really appreciate uh, your support. And also, go ahead and find yourself. Hello, this is the Doom Show. They got their 200th episode coming up where it's all people just saying nice things about them. Well, check that out. 200 episodes. That's pretty awesome. Quite the achievement. We'll, we're never going to get there. No, no. <laughs> I think this is like 33. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
<laughs> I think the average is to like about like 10 episodes for every year we've <laughs> been doing this. Hey, but maybe we'll get more out because we'll have more time. Okay, bye. <laughs> Hanging their dongles. Yeah. <laughs> and there's farty noises. Mm-hmm.